Everyone who's joining us, we've got some people in the wait room. We're getting everyone signed in. Okay, so we are recording this video tonight. I just wanted to stress that to everyone. Um, welcome to the Volunteer Leadership Summit of 2020. My name is Alyssa Miller, and I am the Membership Development Manager with the Council. I'm so glad that you could all be here with us tonight. Um, in my position, I work a lot with volunteers. That is my favorite part of the job. So it's great to be able to share some information with you, important resources, and just different tips that are going to help you through this challenging year we've all been facing. I definitely want to be respectful of everyone's time this evening. So we did set aside a full hour for the summit tonight. So we're going to end right at seven o'clock. Um, as I said, we are recording. So just go ahead and keep your sound on mute. If you do unmute at any time, your video may appear on the recording. Otherwise, it will not. Um, and again, to be respectful of everyone's time, but to encourage interaction and answer anyone's questions, go ahead and type anything you need answered in the chat log for me. We will have different, different presenters throughout the evening, so I'll make sure to monitor that and pass along any questions that you need answered. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just checking. Okay, it looks like everyone is signed in so far. Okay, so let's go ahead as always, as good Girl Scouts, and we will start with our promise and our law. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Okay, so I would like to introduce our first presenter tonight. Her name is Emily Reedford, and she is with Mental Health America. She has actually served as Mental Health America's Executive Director since 2012. She graduated from Indiana University with a Bachelor's in Psychology, Human Development, and Family Studies. And she is a QPR Master Trainer, Mental Health First Aid Trainer, Calm trainer and resilient Evansville trainer. So she has a lot of background and information that can help us out tonight. She currently co-chairs the Suicide Prevention Coalition and Resilient Evansville and was recently named one of Evansville's 20 under 40 leaders by the Rotary Club of Evansville. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Emily. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, the Girl Scout Pledge took me back to my own scouting days as a brownie, and I love that nothing has changed about it. I heard it in my head like I did when I was 10 years old, so that's that's special. Um, thank you all for having me here. Um, I'm really excited to um, be presenting to this group, um, and I hope you guys find this uh, meaningful and impactful and appropriate and applicable to your own lives. Um, like Alyssa mentioned, if you have a question, throw it in the chat. Um, I haven't done this presentation virtually yet, um, but when I've done it in person, there always seems to be a lot of questions. So I'm kind of informal, so if you have a question, um, I usually would say just shout it out or throw your hand up so I can see you. But if you want to throw it in the chat, then we can kind of address it as we go. Um, if we find we have a lot of questions and we're getting up to our time, um, if Alyssa wouldn't mind capturing those and feel free to email me a list of questions, I'll be happy to answer them or provide further resources um, or anything like that kind of offline if we want to do that too. Um, so otherwise, I'll just jump right in. Um, so we've been asked a lot about um, mental health and it's kind of been on the forefront with um, everything COVID-19 and the pandemic. 
um, which is great as a mental health uh, worker because we've been shouting this stuff from the rooftops for years, right? But it's kind of now um, really taken center stage um, as far as one of the biggest um, effects of this virus is um, the importance of our mental health and the, um, the impact that COVID-19 has um, taken on our mental health. Um, so I want to just make a quick mention of our MHA um, national organization. So we run the Vandenberg County affiliate for here in Evansville, um, but there's affiliates all over the state and all over the country. And we also have um, MHA national who um, serves as our organizing body and they really help um, coordinate more of the lobbying and legislative efforts um, that go on in our country. So they have a great national website and for a long time, they have offered mental health screenings um, that are available to people to take. Um, and there, if you, when you click on the page, we don't necessarily have to click through it here, but I've, I've given it to you um, for you to reference and you can look into if you are interested. But if you go to the screening page, you'll see um, a, a bunch of blocks with a lot of different disorders on them, a lot of different um, mental health um, issues and concerns on them. Um, but they have screenings for anxiety, depression, there's a youth version, um, psychosis, bipolar disorder, substance use. And really you can click on and take any of those screenings that you want. They're completely free. Um, they're completely anonymous. Um, they're not meant to self-diagnose. I do wanna be really clear about that. So, um, you know, you can use them, but just because you score a certain way um, just because you're reading results and they're interpreting it for you loosely, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can diagnose yourself and or start treating yourself. But what you can use them for is really um, a conversation starter and a tool uh, to talk with a provider or to get further assistance with that if you do score one way or the other. Uh, but I just want to make a special mention of those trainings because they have been a very, very useful tool for people, both before the pandemic and as we're going through the pandemic. Next slide. And real quick, as we go to the next one, volunteers, when we post this recording on our website, I will post the PowerPoint as well so you can access all of these at a later date. Perfect. Um, so I, I wanted to make mention of those special screenings because um, aside from all the useful personal information that someone can glean from them, um, nationally and um, administratively, we get a lot of great rich data from them as well. So while they're completely anonymous, we do, um, MHA National does track that data to try to see how is this pandemic affecting us? So how is our mental health? So um, for my numbers folks out there, this you'll love these next couple slides because they're chock full of numbers, but I'll try to um, explain them a little bit. So, the number of completed screenings has increased 370% um, from what we're calling BC before coronavirus to now. Um, so between January and May, during kind of the height, the beginning and the height of um, all of this stuff that we've been going through, um, access and clicks on these screenings have been um, up tremendously, okay? So what that means is we've had about eight, over 88,000 additional positive screenings for depression and anxiety. Okay, so we had a baseline number of, of people who were taking screenings. And from that, from January to May, we've had an additional almost 90,000 positive screenings. Okay, um, of that 88 plus thousand, uh, a little over 54,000 were considered moderate to severe for depression. And about 34-ish thousand were considered moderate to severe for anxiety, okay? These also happen to be our two most common mental health disorders, um, BC, before coronavirus. So it's not um, too far-fetched to think now um, that those two specifically are rising at such alarming rates. Okay, next slide. Okay, so what do we know? Pre-pandemic, about one in five of us, around 20%, um, need to access formal treatment. That's a stat that is well replicated, and a lot of national organizations and agencies have gone into finding that number, and that's considered to be a pretty accurate number. Um, now, however, it's looking more like 41% of people 
in America are struggling with depression and anxiety. So that's over doubled, um, you know, since the height of the pandemic. Um, our good friends at the CDC, who we've heard so much from these last couple months, uh, did a survey in June, um, and they found that 11% of adults had seriously considered suicide as an option for how to cope with um, not only the pandemic, but all of the consequences and all of the repercussions that have come with it. Um, that's a staggering number, and um, it's scary to think about because here in Vandenberg County, we have already high rates of suicide. Um, even before the pandemic, okay? Um, they also found that racial and ethnic minorities, LGBT groups, and specifically essential workers, um, those rates are much more higher uh, for that, those suicidal thoughts than the average um, in the nation, okay? So think of those, those special groups, um, they're struggling more, okay? Especially those essential workers who are on the front lines and seeing a lot of the death doing a lot of the treatments and kind of in the thick of COVID-19. Next slide. Uh, we're seeing impacts in the workforce as well. Okay, so about 50%, about half of Americans are reporting that uh, COVID-19 stress has led to at least one negative mental health effect. Okay, so increased stress, um, you know, more work to do at work, it's harder to do your work, um, at least one negative mental health effect. 88% of workers are experiencing that high extreme, you know, moderate to extreme stress. So, um, you know, I think about all those groups working from home as well and to feel stress at home while trying to work and deal with everything home related um, can be very hard to do as well. Um, I thought this one was interesting. 69% of workers in every single age group said that this is the most stressful time in their professional life. Okay, so um, what I think is significant about this is in every single age group. So we have um, younger workers, you know, um, people in high school working their high school jobs, um, entry level jobs and that kind of thing, um, who are just starting out even folks who are working in um, fast food, at the grocery stores, in retails, it is the most stressful time for their um, professional life as well. And if you can imagine, it's because now we've noticed that those are all essential workers, right? We have to have people in retail stores, we have to have people in restaurants and that kind of thing. Um, and we're all kind of low key struggling a little bit. You know, there's always just this low grade, um, stress that's going on because of what we've all been dealing with. So when people are out and about and using um, these facilities and interacting with these workers, um, chances are it's um, more stressful for everyone. So you're not getting everyone's best behavior in a restaurant or at a retail store or whatever. So these workers are dealing not only with their own stress, but the stress of those individuals in their workplace as well. And 91% of those working from home experience moderate to severe stress, um, present company included, right? So I'm one of those that I don't work well from home. I like my office and I like my routine and, um, you know, it's hard um, for those of us working at home. You know, you think you have all your creature comforts at your office where you work and, um, you know, sometimes you come in and there's five-year-olds waving at you and when they're supposed to be outside. So um, while it can be fun, a lot of times it is stressful. Um, it's stressful turning off the computer at night. It's stressful trying to keep, um, keep everything going in the right direction. Okay, next slide. Okay, so what does this really mean? Well, when we look at it, um, it's, it's kind of scary to think about, but this pandemic could lead um, what experts are estimating as about an additional 75,000 deaths of despair. So what is a death of despair? It's things like drug overdose, alcohol use and misuse, specifically suicide. Um, and when we talk about suicide, we're, um, we're looking at really at what, are, um, what people are using as an option to cope with things like unemployment, the social isolation, lack of control is um, a very scary one for people. And then there's the actual fears about the actual virus itself, getting sick, having a loved one be sick or, um, 
or die because of the virus. And we have seen this trend locally as well. I do wanna be clear about that. So um, in fact, um, at the beginning of everything, um, it was probably about in April, our coroner called and said, hey, we pull a group together because we're seeing some scary numbers here and we need to do something about it. So a group of us got together and we did a pretty strategic media campaign around town, um, talking with all the local news channels, local radio, local midday shows and that kind of thing, um, talking about resources um, that are available in our community who are still seeing people, who are still taking patients, um, getting people to understand that there, are, there is still help out there and you can still access it and suicide does not have to be that option that you use um, to deal with this. So we saw pretty high numbers um, between the end of February and the end of April. Um, so we did this media campaign with, every, with um, you know, locally with some different agencies and we actually did see a drop in our suicide numbers, which was incredible. So just for instance, just to give you a point of reference, um, last July, so in 2019 of July, um, we had 10 suicide deaths in Vandenberg County alone. Um, this July, however, in 2020, even with a global pandemic going on, we had one. So, and while we do, of course, acknowledge that one is still one too many, um, the fact that we went from nine to one is pretty significant. Um, but we can directly correlate the impact and COVID-19 to some of our local suicide deaths because it was um, referenced in suicide notes, it was talked about and verbalized with people that you know um, could actually give some credibility to that. So we know that the, that the pandemic and the repercussions of it have um, had significant impact on, on people's lives in a negative way. Next slide. Okay, so how do we cope? So that's kind of why I'm here, right? Like, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. How do we get through um, something like this? And um, really the truth of the matter is these tried and true methods, um, they're tried and true because they work, right? So things like nutrition, sleep, physical activity, and more importantly, deep breathing can all contribute to coping and coping well. So um, full disclosure, kale is not my comfort food. I do not turn to kale when I need to feel better or when I need to celebrate a birthday or when I've had a bad day or a good day for that matter. Um, but I know that I feel better and I do better when I eat better. So um, things like keeping healthy food available, um, choosing your vices and partaking in those in moderation is, is always going to be the best bet. Um, I went through the baking phase too of quarantine. I stayed in it about a week or so too long. Um, but, you know, of course, all that kind of stuff in moderation. Um, and nutrition is incredibly important. What you put in your body um, helps your brain, helps how you um, feel overall with your health. Um, sleeping, six to eight hours a night, again, with good sleep hygiene. So in a cool, dark and distraction-free place. Um, I know in my own household, we um, kind of had a, a good week where we were, oh, let's stay up late because, you know, we can work at home tomorrow and, you know, that kind of thing. Let's binge Netflix for a couple hours. And um, even in my own house, we quickly were like, okay, we have got to get back to basics here. And, um, you know, so we kept the kids going to bed at eight o'clock still because we needed that time to power down too. And, um, you know, because really my kids are still up at 5.30, whether they go to bed at 10.30 or whether they go to bed at eight o'clock. So we just kind of kept the rule, let's, let's keep our sleep the same. Um, physical activity, um, even something as short as a quick walk around the block um, can really make a big difference, especially if you're kind of in a, a stressed, amped up kind of uh, feeling or uh, situation at the time. And we cannot underestimate the impact of deep breathing. I love deep breathing because it's free. We all do it. You can do it discreetly and it really, really works. And now um, with the availability of smartphones and all that kind of stuff, there are hundreds of apps out there that you can put on your phone that actually walk you through, how do I do this in the right strategic um, and calculated way? 
Um, there's guided meditations, there's um, sleep stories, there's all kinds of deep breathing apps that are really, really great. Um, so if you're interested in a specific recommendation, I can throw some out there if you want, but um, just a quick, you know, um, app search on your phone will lend you some great ones. And they're really, um, they're really beneficial for all age ranges. And there's a lot of people who um, really utilize them and, and it works really well. We've kind of used deep breathing in my house when we're frustrated or, um, you know, kind of going through some stuff. And we call them yoga breaths in my house. You breathe in for five, hold it for three and out for five. And we were driving the other day and there was a lady in traffic who was honking her horn and kind of going off the deep end a little bit. And my five-year-old turns and says, mom, she needs a yoga breath. I said, yeah, let's, she does. Let's take one for her. And, you know, um, but kids can pick up on this kind of stuff too. And it's that modeling behavior that really, um, you know, taking care of yourself and modeling how to do that in a healthy way. Kids pick up on that. And next thing you know, they're recommending yoga breaths and that's a good thing too. So. Okay, next slide. Okay, so some more ideas that work. So we know that connection has always been important. And I think we saw that when we were all sheltering in place, but things like Zoom, even calling people, texting them, talking to the neighbor across the street, all of those different activities really do build that connection. And um, just a simple, hey, how are you today? Can go a long way with people. Um, acknowledging the moment. So naming it, being with it, and letting it go. Um, we did this a lot in my house with um, when all four of us were here sheltering in place. It was kind of like, I'm having a moment. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's not a great day for me, or this is a hard morning. And, you know, um, it kind of helped everyone in our house and our, in our house understand that, okay, we need to little, give a little grace here and maybe someone else can help pick up the slack or mom's got a lot going on. So we need to back off a little bit, you know? So, but just acknowledging it and being able to say, I'm struggling today, or this is hard and I don't know why, um, but really sitting with that and then giving it a chance to let it go and know that tomorrow or in the afternoon or after some time's passed, you get another chance to try again. Um, communication, I think is, um, never been more important. Uh, we have to be honest with ourselves about where we are mentally and emotionally um, and sometimes physically. Are you physically okay? Are you awaiting test results? How are you feeling about that? That kind of thing. Um, but really asking for grace and asking for space. Okay, so again, we did this in my house a lot because people were stressed at different times about different things. And it was important for us to um, really just kind of communicate that about like, you know, I've got a stressful work meeting that I'm now trying to do over Zoom and that's really hard. So I'm asking you to give me some quiet time so I can work this out. Um, but really, I think this kind of works um, even in normal precedented times instead of um, during a crisis time too, but it can be especially important in a crisis. Um, learning how to control what you can. I um, referenced being out of control can contribute to some other negative things, but learning how to control what you can and focusing on that. So things like limiting screen time, um, self-screening the news, sticking to a routine. You can control what you put in your body with nutrition. You can control how you sleep and you can control your physical um, activity and your breathing, of course. So learning how to control what you can and focusing on that, especially when everything else around you seems so out of your control, uh, can really go a long way with, um, with your mental health. Um, things like creativity um, have been a huge outlet for people. Starting a new hobby, just getting out and exploring nature. Um, some people have even started listening or playing a musical instrument, listening to music they either have always loved or maybe exploring a genre that they've never really had experience with. Um, journaling, drawing, coloring, different crafts and that kind of thing can really um, kind of give you an outlet to where you don't have to focus on what's hard at the moment or what's stressful, but really kind of giving you something um, that brings you joy. Okay, next slide. Okay, finding a silver lining. I think this is um, something that I have tried to do throughout this whole thing. Some days it's easier than others. Um, 
but finding a silver lining. So we have seen, um, at least big picture wise, some silver linings come out of COVID-19 and the pandemic. Some agencies are reporting um, increased patient compliance, which is huge. So um, things like um, patients will keep their appointments, they will show up for their appointments, they will comply with doctor's orders about exercise and eating right and taking medications and getting follow-ups and that kind of thing. So we are seeing an overall focus on health and that's led to some increased patient compliance. Um, we have seen some increases in access to health services via telehealth, okay? So now, um, especially for those folks living in the rural communities, you don't necessarily have to spend half of your day driving to and from, whether it's Evansville or another bigger city to get your health services. Um, a lot of things can be done now via telehealth. Um, even in fact, at the Easter Sills Rehab Center where they do um, physical therapy um, with their clients, um, who would have ever thought you could do physical therapy over Zoom with kids? But um, their executive director told us that um, in a United Way meeting a couple weeks ago that they're actually doing physical therapy sessions with kids over Zoom. Or over Zoom. So who would have thought? Um, some other things are decreased wait times to see a provider. Um, some of the red tape has been lifted with telehealth and billing and that kind of thing which has led to um, decreased wait times for people to actually access a provider, specifically a mental health provider, because that has tended to be a challenge in the past. Um, I mentioned that we're all kind of low key struggling or low grade struggling with their mental health, with mental health right now. Um, so I think there is kind of this somewhat of a decreased stigma with mental health because this has been hard for everybody, right? So, um, and the pandemic we know has not been um, a character flaw of anybody. It's not because anybody um, did something to bring this on themselves um, in a lot of respects. So um, there is this decreased stigma in mental health. Like this is hard for everybody. So let's give everybody a little grace. And when you need help, ask for it. And um, we're seeing a little less judgment for people there doing that. Um, I mentioned earlier the decreased suicides, specifically in July and um, now up through September, we have seen that locally. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, the schools have reported in a meeting that I was in that the staggered um, start dates for schools was um, incredibly beneficial for some of their students. Um, so they might look at implementing that going forward um, in future years. So that's, um, again, a silver lining and something they may have never even started had it not been for the pandemic. Um, and then of course, personal silver linings. I think um, we can all see these and find these in our daily life, even though some days it may be harder. Um, it was incredibly hard for us, for my family, having both my husband and I, my careers, both being at home within 30 feet of each other in the kitchen and the makeshift dining room and, and having the kids here. Um, but one thing we did notice was our kids would go outside and play and we'd say, okay, just be kind to each other. Don't break anything and don't leave the backyard. Those are the only three rules they had, right? We were just like, go outside and have fun. Um, I later had to add, please don't turn on the water because that was something I found out the hard way. So there were technically four rules, but you know what I mean. But they were having so much fun just letting loose and being kids and their relationship got so much closer and I just, we always kind of sat back and wondered like, God, would that have ever happened had we not been holed up in the house for so long? Uh, but it was really kind of special for us to see because they're so different. And um, it was really kind of fun to see their relationship blossoming and they're getting plans for doing something fun the next day too. So um, finding those personal silver linings, um, whether it be professionally or, um, or otherwise, they are there and um, celebrate those when you can. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is a slide um, outlining some local resources and I'm glad Alyssa's gonna share the slide deck so you'll have these. Don't feel like you have to take a screenshot of it, of it or anything, but um, you can use these. I just wanna highlight, um, we have a local suicide prevention hotline number um, that's answered here locally or you, anyone can use the national too. And there's a text line with that also. Um, and really it says text HOPE in there, but you can text anything in there and they will text you back um, 
to you. So Deaconess Cross Point, St. Vincent, and Southwestern are kind of the mental health um, hospitals that you, if you will, that you can use. And then my number's on there last in case you have any questions or need further resources or things like that. But next slide. Uh, this is my contact information. So um, that email, it looks a little generic, but it does come straight to my inbox at work. So feel free if you have um, further questions about um, services or resources or supports that are available for um, someone you know or a client you're working with, I'd be happy to help you navigate that. Um, that phone number is our office number if you want to get in touch with us that way. Um, and we have a Facebook page that we've been trying to share um, a lot of local resources, but also tips and tricks and articles and um, just anything that we might feel that is beneficial for people. Um, if you're interested in any of our MHA programming, such as the training support groups or anything like that, again, please reach out. I'd be happy to talk more in depth with you or um, put you in touch with those services. Um, next slide. And that just tells you I know what I'm talking about. So. Um, any, it, have there been any questions, Alyssa, in the chat? There we go. I was trying to unmute. Actually, no, it looks like everyone okay. is good. We'll give them one more minute in case there's anything that they want to ask. And sure. I really appreciate you again, Emily, just being here and talking through all of this. The information is very humbling. I know that, you know, as we're going through day to day, we're just adjusting to this new normal, even if that's every hour, every minute, whatever that may look like. So it's really been a while since I have personally stopped to reflect on this. And I agree that the personal linings is what I have to come back to a lot and the breathing. Um, I found myself, as you were saying that, I was like, I wanna take this count of breath in. So I participated with you as you were good. Good. Being, like you said, good for road rage. Um, and I know you have to wrap up in a minute. I did want to ask, obviously, we all know as adults that we cannot take care of anyone else unless we are taking care of ourselves, first and foremost, which can be very hard to remember at times. Um, but for all of our volunteers that are working with girls and trying to help them navigate these crazy times and a variety of issues that they've had previously and new ones that are also coming up, are there any kind of final tips for them other than breathe? <laughs> yeah, I think you have to be intentional with um, with kids when you're talking about what you're doing for yourself. So, um, you know, when we're cooking dinner and we're trying to decide what we're gonna have, whether it's gonna be pizza or maybe we'll make a salad, say, you know, I'm gonna do this because I like healthy food and that helps me feel better. We just talk about it and explain the why behind it. Like, yeah, you could, choose chips or an orange, but the chips may taste better, but the orange is going to fill you up and keep you healthy and give you vitamin C and all that. We did really just encourage people to explain their decisions a little bit more so kids can understand the why. It's not because mom's being mean and she doesn't want you to have chips. It's because, no, it's because we want you to be healthy and we want you to get good habits and we want you to understand things. And I think we have to be real intentional with that with self-care too. When you say, you know what, Mom needs a minute because I'm very frustrated and I don't want to yell at you. I just need to take five minutes to myself and breathe and then I'll come back and we can address exactly what you need. But if you, when you can explain things like that, then kids take it upon themselves to give themselves that permission to say, I just need five minutes and then I'll come do what you need me to do. Or I just need to finish this up and then I can you know, follow the next instructions or whatever. But I think when, we're, when we do model that behavior, we give kids permission to do that for themselves as well. And, you know, we, it's important to practice what you preach because most often kids are going to pay attention to what you do and less of what you say. Does that help? Absolutely. Thank you. Again, I appreciate it. Um, it was great having you here tonight and I will definitely reach out to you again. I'm, I am personally interested to learn more about your other trainings. I know volunteers have had questions about those in the past as well. So I will definitely stay in touch with you. Okay. We appreciate it and you enjoy your evening. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Thanks, Emily. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pass off the conversation to our COO, Jessica Catome. 
She's going to be addressing some new information and questions regarding our upcoming cookie program. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great night. Thank you for joining us. Um, as Emily said, we do have a lot going on personally, professionally, and know that we are here to support you. Um, we do want to talk about our upcoming cookie program that we have uh, planned that will start on December 11th, where the girls will start taking other orders. We have a lot of changes that we um, have incorporated this year. We want to make sure everyone's receiving the right message, the right information. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box um, and we will address them. If we run out of time this evening, we will uh, set up another call and we will get everyone's questions answered. Um, so the biggest news is that we do have a new cookie this year. It is our Toast Jay. It is replacing our Thanks A Lot that went away last year. Um, it's a phenomenal cookie. We will have all of our taste, uh, our troop samples that will be going out. Um, everything from ABC will be shipping out November 2nd to our service at Cookie Chairs, and that'll be all the materials that we have. And then we will make sure that when we have our service unit cookie chair kickoff, that we do send a package of what we have available out to every troop to try. Um, so one of the largest changes that we have is that we have a price increase with all of our cookies. Um, it is a dollar on the core eight. So those core eight are the um, Thin Mints, Lemonades, Toastiers, Peanut Butter Patties, Peanut Butter Sandwiches, S'mores, um, Caramel Delights. I'm probably leaving one off there. And then the $6 package is the Gluten-Free, the Caramel Chocolate Chip. Um, with that, we haven't had a price increase for six years now. And we have incurred a lot of additional um, fees between the baker, um, the recognitions, just the cost of everything has continued to go up. And we've incurred all of those expenses. And then we've added some new uh, features this year, such as accepting credit cards and debit cards. Uh, we know um, one thing that I do know, um, I'm not certain about what's going to happen tomorrow. I am certain about that. I don't know what tomorrow brings. So we're trying to be as proactive to keep this touchless. If we do have um, girls that are out there and they have direct contact with a customer, that they can use a credit card. And there's not as much back and forth of them touching each other, um, eliminate some of that. It, it will be a great addition to it. We will have a lot of videos, a lot of training videos to assist with that. So girls can do it on their own. They can do it at a booth. They can do it in any way that they would like. Um, so that is our, our largest um, feature that the council is going to roll out this year. And we're very excited about it. Um, speaking with the baker, everyone else um, that has tried this before has seen a huge increase. And we thought with it being a pandemic year, it was a perfect opportunity to move us into 2020 where we can't accept the credit cards and the council is going to take that fee. So it's no longer a troop problem that we've heard in the past. Um, we've tried to really listen to what everyone is saying and accommodate those and ensure that we're still running the organization as a business to ensure we can continue to provide you with the resources that we need to. So with that uh, price increase as well, we are going to uh, return more of the um, proceeds to the troops. And on an average, it's an 18% increase. Um, some of them are a little over 20%, some are lower um, to about 17. So we do see, um, we do recognize that the troops do need to have an increased proceeds. And with that, when we looked at the recognitions, we tried to go with better recognitions that will um, be appreciated by the girls and the parents. And we've eliminated the um, experience. We know that there are a lot of um, things places that maybe aren't open. So to alleviate us of having that problem, we've incorporated um, Visa gift cards, uh, things that are not, uh, you know, like a zip lining or an adventure uh, based experience, um, just to kind of help us there. And the girls can go out and utilize those gift cards wherever they'd like. Um, we're hoping that the girls will be really excited about that. Another thing that we are really wanting to um, help the girls with and meeting their goals is the direct ship. 
And a lot of the girls have participated in this. Last year, we had a 300% increase on our online sales. And we really want to encourage the girls to take advantage of this. We have incorporated new online direct ship recognitions. So if the girls participate with their online sell and have the product directly shipped to their customers, they can earn additional incentives to help them reach those goals. We know it could be a trying time. Um, hopefully everything will go back to what we know as normal and we can be out there. One thing that I think a lot of people are out wondering about are booths. We are not certain about who is going to allow us to have a storefront booth at this time. Um, we wanna be very transparent about that. We don't know what tomorrow has to bring and some of the places are a little hesitant to say, absolutely in February, your girls and your volunteers can be sitting in front of our building. So we are waiting on the Walmarts, the Sam's, the Joann's, the ones that we have national uh, contracts with through GSUSA to state, yes, you can go ahead and have your booth and we can set up those lotteries. So when we talk about our booth lotteries, we are going to change that process as well this year. Um, within Smart Cookies, the platform has the ability to have a true lottery where you can go out and you can put your, your requests in and everyone has the same opportunity. It's not going to be an email based um, who gets their email in first. So we're going to change that, uh, be a lot less work on the new director of product sales, which I know everyone is dying to know. I have not yet filled that position. I do have um, some candidates, some very strong ones, and I will be offering, um, I'm going to cut off the resumes and any kind of interviews tomorrow. And we will be announcing once the person accepts it, if they do, who the, she is going to be, she or he. Um, so they will hit the ground running. Again, there are already a lot of changes. Um, does anyone have any questions right now, Alyssa? Do we have any questions in the chat box at this time? Yes, I do have okay. one that was specifically how much of the funds will be given back to the troop. So I think that means per package, since you had talked about the percentages. Okay, so um, we did send out to all of our troop leaders frequently asked questions, which have our per package proceeds on there. And if you didn't receive it, please reach out to Alyssa or Donna so they can send that again. Um, but it is tiered. Um, it's always been tiered based on the uh, per girl average and what each girl will sell. So for example, the less than 100 packages per girl is 35 cents a package now. Um, previous year, it was 30 cents. Um, the next one is 100 to 124 packages. It's 37 cents. Um, I would really prefer for us to send it all out. If you want me to go through each one, I can. But we've increased our opt out, which is where the troop would opt out of, and it's all girls, the entire troop would opt out of recognitions and earn a higher um, per package proceeds. So for example, if the girls that are juniors or and above, if they opt out of recognitions, instead of receiving 35 cents on the package, they would receive 37 cents. When we get down to the 250 packages or more, it's 49 cents per package if you do not opt out. It's 58 cents if you do opt out. Did I say that right? I think I did. So we did increase that. Um, and that's, that's part of what we want to make sure we, we are taking care of our members. The girls are getting the proceeds that they, they need to continue. Um, if we did not increase the price, though, after we looked at the numbers, everything that we have to cover, it, it wasn't feasible for us to continue to listen to our membership and try to provide more proceeds without increasing the price. It just wasn't an effective business plan that we could incorporate this year. Alyssa, do we have any other questions? That is all at this moment. Okay. Um, the other piece I would like to um, really stress to everyone is that we have our 
uh, troop pre-orders for gluten-free cookies. So the gluten-frees are made in a gluten-free certified facility, which means that it takes them longer to uh, manufacture those cookies. We have given the deadline to all of our troop leaders to put in their order and it's via a WUFU link. If you do not have the link, Donna, Alyssa, or if you email support at Girl Scouts, um, they can send you the link. We are asking for all orders to be in by the 28th of this month. I will need to place the order with ABC um, by the 30th. So it's not that we don't have the opportunity to get them, but we need to have a really good idea of how many of the troops are going to want. Um, it is a very limited uh, cookie. And once we place our order, there will not be an opportunity to place a restock order. Know that once you order these as a pre-troop um, order, they will be your troops cookies. They will be available with your troop pickups whenever we do our um, pickups at the beginning of February. Um, and if they do not pre-order them, it will be a very limited quantity uh, within the cupboard and it will be on a first come first serve basis. Any questions there, Alyssa? We're still good. Were there other cookie topics that you wanted to mention? Um, not that I, not that I see, but just to make sure that we all take this increase as a positive. Um, whenever we're talking to people, a lot of times, and research has even shown this, that they don't know how much the cookies were last year. We do know because we're all very involved with Girl Scouts and we wanted to make sure that one, we give everyone the opportunity to understand why we had to increase the price. And it does take us into um, about 80% of what the other councils are all charging. So now all of the councils that surround us will have the same price for all of their cookies, except for the S'more, which is a specialty cookie for Little Brownie Baker, but it is not a specialty cookie for Girl Scouts of Southwest Indiana. So that is the one that will have a price difference. We're still at $5 when other councils with Little Brownie Baker may be at $6 on that one. Um, but we know that the people don't buy the cookies for the cookies, they buy it to support the girls. And we wanna make sure that as we're telling people, you know, what these, uh, what the program does for girls, We'll make sure that the girls are illustrating that. Um, and I encourage everyone to invite their troops to participate in our virtual cookie kickoff. That is gonna be on November 14th at 7.30. Um, it's gonna be our virtual cookie rally. We are going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, I don't know if everyone knows yet, but I am now a troop leader for um, a third grade Brownie troop in Southwest Warwick. It has been a phenomenal experience. And we will have the girls in here to help us show up all of the new recognitions and to talk about those skills that our cookie program does uh, bring to them. Alyssa, did Angie have something? Regarding? She had oh, unmuted, I, just I have, didn't know. I just have one. Um, so it's a question regarding the cookie cupboards. Um, it says there has been a talk that there will not be cupboards in different areas so that there may be cupboards in some areas, possibly not cupboards in other areas. Is this true? I guess compared to last year and what we typically have. Okay, I appreciate that question. We at the current time do not have any changes in our cupboards. Um, last year we did not have a cupboard in Knox that was uh, manned by a individual that was volunteering in Knox County. We did have a service in a cookie chair in Pike that assisted with covering in Knox. But at the current time, we do plan to have all of the, the same cupboards that we always have, have one in Perry, have one in Dubois, have one in Knox, and have one here at the council. Davies. And Davies County, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, Annette. I know she would not be happy with that. Yes, Davies as well. I know she's going to listen to the recording. I told her we'll have it out there. So she'll, she'll get a giggle when she hears that. Uh, and I know you mentioned that we are updating a few more things in Cookies 101. So that will be out soon, correct? Yes. So continue to watch for the emails that come from Alyssa and or Donna. Um, our newsletter, check our website. 
We are updating everything as quickly as possible. We do have a lot of changes and we want to make sure that it is stated in a manner that we can all understand and it has quick links to the videos. So we know how to quickly uh, do an e-card. Um, we, can, we can do a lot of things that we have not had videos out there. So in place of having a lot of in-person meetings where it takes a lot of time, you have to travel, um, you know, we have this entire time zone thing where half the council is an hour ahead of us. We want to do a lot of videos, training videos, so the parents can watch them, give the parents tips of how they can help their girl continue, regardless of what it looks like on December 11th when the girls can start taking the orders. We want to be prepared for that and be very proactive. So there will be more videos out there available and we'll be pushing them out in every uh, social media electronic um, option that we have available to us. Okay, and then I believe I had another question about the cookie cupboards. Um, if the leader for Dubois is the one that was set up previ previously this year or if it is a new individual. So in Dubois County, we have individuals that are willing to help and then we have um, a new individual that's wanting to have the cupboard. And it is, um, from what I understand, I didn't look like kind of what's south and what's north Dubois, um, but it, it sits right there on the line of south and north Dubois. Um, I have heard concern that it is really hard for troops when they have their booths for they have their booths in Jasper, that's hard to get more cookies. We're just gonna have to have better communication and be more willing to work with each other um, to make sure we can get those cookies there and not enough with the girls out. We, we want the girls to have a successful booth. Um, we don't want to have any sort of, it, it's a logistics kind of, of issue. We wanna make sure we can make that work. So we're going to continue to increase our communication Make sure that we can get those cookies to the troops, to the girls. We don't want anyone to say, well, I had to leave the booth an hour and a half early because I sewed out and I couldn't get the cookies. We want to make sure we can take care of that. Um, so that's another thing that is on my list to make sure that we are continuously improving on. Uh, that's one thing that as a council that we have really tried to do, continuously improve. Uh, listen to our leaders, see what they're saying, and then trying to accommodate everyone, which we know we can't accommodate everyone, but we will most certainly listen and try to make the best decisions that will help everyone be successful with their girls. Thank you. Do you recall the name of the individual who's going to have it this year? We have a volunteer listening who um, believed she's helping with it and just wanted to verify that she is correct. <laughs> Kenny Speed. Thank you. I have Donna in here and she knows everything. Kenny okay. Speed is okay. the one that is is currently set up for the covered. Um, obviously, as things continue to uh, change, it, it could change. That's not what I'm expecting right now, um, but that is the individual that is going to have the cookies uh, housed there in, New, in Dubois County. Okay, thank you. So I did go ahead in the chat log and put the link that you can register for the virtual cookie rally. And Donna and I are going to be sending out that information soon to everyone in email as well. So you can find it there or you can find it on our website. If you think of any other cookie questions that you have for the last few minutes, go ahead and type them in. I'll keep watching the log. Jessica will be on with us if I need to pass it off to her. And I am watching the time, so it looks like we have a few minutes left. There are some new resources that I'm very excited to show everyone that are on our website. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me just one second. Okay. As you can see, I've got the page up for the virtual cookie rally. So this is where you can find it on our website. And the two tabs that I want to show you are the volunteer tab and then the resource tab. So the volunteer tab, um, I know is not typically visited as frequently because most of us go to look for all of the forms under resources. Um, but I'm going to give you a quick summary of the new information that we have here. Again, I know we're limited for time tonight, so I am going to do a very in-depth 
video at a later date, but still in the near future. So you can see everything that is on here in depth. But I want to point out this truth leader blueprint that is at the bottom of the side tabs. Um, I will note when you are looking at it on your phone, it does look slightly different, but you can also still see the tabs that are on the side. So just something to think about since a lot of us are viewing this through our media nowadays and our phones. So when you click on it, it's going to show you the blueprint. And this is designed to help leaders specifically with this year. So resources that you would need, whether you are doing virtual meetings or whether you are in person, but are doing extra safety precautions than what you are typically used to. And the nice part is it is all in one location for you. So if you scroll down, you're going to see there's information specific to your level. I'm going to click on daisies just so you can see what it looks like. And when you open it up, it's going to give you some ideas that you can use for your meeting. So there's about three to four for each level as well as the multi-level. And you can see at the bottom as well, there's more that GSUSA is going to be rolling out within November and February. As soon as GSUSA updates that, that will come directly to our council page. So you are not going to have to look for it. We will take care of it. It will all be here for you. And then when you click on one of the meetings, it will give you all of the resources that you need. So I'm going to scroll down a little so you can see it. And um, they all have some sort of video that you can utilize, whether it appears like this or this link down here um, is actually a video. I am going to click this so you can see it real quick. Some of the videos are videos that GSUSA has used previously. So if you see a date on something and it is already passed, please do not feel like you've missed out on this opportunity. It just means that you are watching a recording. So I didn't want to have any confusion with that. Give me one sec. I have to have a lot on my screen that I'm <laughs> rearranging as we go through this. Okay, we did that. There we go. Um, and then it's also going to give you the handouts that you would need, and it'll give you a recommendation. Let me find another one. This one's going to give you the link to the volunteer toolkit so you can see any meeting aids that you would need. Um, this one, since it is a full badge, I can show you this as well. The requirements, um, the three steps for daisies or the five steps for brownies and up will be listed there. So that gives you a quick summary of the badge, and then it'll let you know which step different pieces are going through. So this video is giving you advice for step two. And then, okay, so this is great as well that I wanna point out. There are information for digital icebreakers and games, which can be very helpful whether you are virtual or in person. Since again, a lot of what we do, we are used to being close together, often holding hands, different things like that. And then I wanna point out the suggested virtual meeting plan. So anytime you click on this, it's going to give you a chart with information on how to break down the volunteer toolkit meetings. So what you will do, you'll go to the volunteer toolkit from the link that you saw previously, you'll select the meeting for these badges. Any badge you do, there will always be two meetings for it. And then this new layout is gonna show you from the curriculum, which ones, items, activities you want to pick and choose from that will really help you if you are meeting virtually. And again, anything that you can do virtual is a great option that you can do in person as well, other than, you know, if you want to showcase a pet that you have at home or different things like that. But so definitely helpful information out here for you. And then I'm going to go back to the blueprint page. Got one more minute. I'm watching the clock. Oh, it just turned Turn seven, so I'm gonna finish real quick for us. I do want to show you on this tab, so there's more information, different information from GSUSA, our council COVID guidelines below for you, all kinds of information that's gonna help you. And then under the local support and training, we do have our current GSSI volunteer guides. So those will be helpful for you. And then also leader, support videos. So this has the virtual CEO chat that Amy Secura recently did in September. We're going to post the summit video here. That's where we'll have um, the slide deck as well, a STEM workshop that we did during the initial start of COVID, and then some very short and brief tips and tricks videos that I've been working on just to highlight um, aspects of, of Girl Scouts that either new leaders may not be familiar with or that's just a good refresher for us. So anytime you think of a topic that you would like us to cover, whether you want it to be 
an hour long presentation with leaders from all over the area, whether you want to do breakout rooms, um, a small five minute tips and tricks videos on any topic, definitely let myself or Donna know, and I will go ahead and prep that for you. And then last but not least, our resource page. So this is the tab that you would typically click on. It said forums, and there was a giant, giant list of forums that we know gave the majority of us a headache to look at. So we went ahead and organized it for everyone. Um, we're going to keep adding to this as we go throughout the year, but everything is nicely organized so you can find what you are looking for easily. So our COVID guidelines are at the top, Mem membership registration forms, those are actually the paper forms if you're going to pay for membership, um, permission forms, it actually goes through, here's our Troop Leaders Guide to Permissions the forms you typically need, what they're for, when they need to be submitted, our additional ones for special activity forms we have this year, um, safety information, again, important forms you would need, activity forms for outing, if you're sp submitting special activity application, all of our community partner information, so the program guides, if you want to give a summary of a partner program, and then we're going to add a large if list of activity resources for leaders. So as you can see, we already have a few here that will be helpful. We have a huge list of additional ones we're going to add. So again, we'll keep updating this throughout the year. This is just our starting point, and we're going to continue to grow it for everyone. Um, but troop funds, bank accounts, and money earning information, girl and adult awards. So we've got individual level, all the highest award information, troop awards, adult awards, and then again, our resource guides that I showed you on the other page. Um, so this is all of our policies and procedures, new leader information that can also be a helpful basic review for any existing leaders if you just want to refresh your own things. Camp and Outdoor and then the Travel Volunteer Guides, they actually combine everything you need to know from both council information, the safety activity checkpoints, and the volunteer essentials. So I know sometimes it can be overwhelming figuring out what do I actually need to go and reference. We have put it all there for you. So it's all in one place for both of those topics. And then on the side, scrolling back up, you can see safety activity checkpoints is right there. Volunteer essentials is next. And volunteer essentials is broken down as well into some other options. So you can either see the full guide here as usual, or you can break it down to see what you may want. Click on that section and get some information. Um, so I'm gonna check the chat log again real quick. Um, I see someone that says, this is wonderful, it looks fantastic. So again, we always just wanna do everything we can to make life in general easier for the volunteers. Um, anything we can do to help, whether it's something that you need personally or something that we can help out in, in the volunteer role. We are here to support you. And we know, I fully believe, I say this all the time, that no one has time to volunteer. So we want to do as much as we can to minimize that for you. So again, Donna and I, as we have major updates to this page and on our website, we'll email everyone so that you do know what's coming. Um, but throughout the year, anything that's relevant to any of these resource categories, we'll continue to update, keep placing there as we go. If there's something you want to see there in the meantime, let us know. And then I will start working on a detailed description of everything that's in here as we finish adding what we're ready to, to get on there at this time. We have a few more things we want to add first. Um, so I don't see any other questions. Thank you again for everyone who's attending. We truly appreciate all of our volunteers. Um, we know that we could not exist Without you, we joke in the office that we have to have uh, every staff member we have so that we could exist because we could not do the other's jobs. And that is the same with the volunteers. We literally would not exist without you. So thank you for all you do, especially during this tricky time of year. Um, we're excited to keep giving you more resources. So stay tuned, enjoy your evening. We'll go ahead and get this posted as soon as possible to the website. And anything else you think of, just let us know. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night.